these photographs are just a snapshot of what Afghanistan looked once. Yes, Afghanistan was like this once. But sadly today, the women of this nation have lost their rights to education. But how did this happen? Why is this country, like few other Middle Eastern countries, drifting backwards in time? Who is responsible for this? Will Afghanistan ever be a paradise it was? Will women of Afghanistan ever get the basic human rights back? Like always, let's go back in time and find what really happened. 1919, Afghanistan won its independence from British Empire and King Amanullah Khan became the king of Afghanistan. King Amanullah was very liberal and he had plans to improve the status of Afghan women. He was the first king of Afghanistan to break the tradition of polygamy and had only one wife. Women of Afghanistan received their right to vote in 1919, which was one year before the women in US could vote. Khan created other reforms for women, including the Family Law Code, which banned child marriage and he granted women the right to choose their husbands. During the decade Khan was in power, he created Afghanistan's first constitution, which abolished slavery, created a legislature, guaranteed secular education, and instituted equal rights for men and women. Queen Suraya Tarzai, wife of King Amanullah, ripped off her wheel during a public appearance and told Afghan women that none of the verses in Quran commands a woman to wear a wheel and what you wear is your choice. But whenever someone tries to bring any kind of reforms and challenges the religious beliefs, the hardcore and blind believers take the responsibility to bring them down. In 1929, tribal leaders who were increasingly agitated at the reforms Khan had brought forced him to flee the country and claim the throne for themselves. But in 1933, Zahir Shah was appointed as the king of Afghanistan after his father Nadir Shah's death. But real power was still not in his hands. It was resided in hands of three of his uncles. Shah Hashim Khan, Shah Muhammad Khan and Shah Wali Khan. They wanted a slow modernization so that they don't upset the traditional thinking of Afghan tribes. So for the next 30 years, Zahir Shah made a slow and steady development towards a better Afghanistan. But in 1963, the most pivotal event took place, and that was resignation of Afghan Prime Minister Daud Khan. After India's independence in 1947, area of Afghanistan, which was dominated by ethnic Pashtuns, was given to Pakistan under Durand's line. And to oppose this, Prime Minister Daud Khan started funding separatist movement in today's Khyber Pakhtun. In retaliation, Pakistan halted all the trade through Afghan border, which resulted in a complete cutoff from India and South Asia. And to fix this mistake, King Zahir Shah forced Daud Khan to resign and started a new chapter of Afghan history. It was time to reinstate the voting rights of Afghan citizens and conduct elections after almost 40 years. But this time, not only women could vote, but also stand as a representative. And there was one condition that members of royal family could not hold political power, which would ensure that Daud Khan cannot be elected as prime minister again. But yet again, there were people who were not in support of this amendment and constitution. And this time, it was in universities. PDPA or People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan which had communist ideology and the other was Islamic party, which wanted Sharia law. 1973, when King Zahir Shah was on a foreign trip, Daud Khan did a bloodless coup with the help of PDP and military and established a communist government. But he did not claim his title of the king, but chose to be the president of Afghanistan and renamed the country to Republic of Afghanistan. And like other communist nations, Daud Khan started concentrating all the power by disbanding the judiciary and parliament. So now, Daud Khan was a dictator. 
He did follow the communist ideology by nationalizing the banks and the photographs that we saw in the beginning of the video are indeed from this time of him as a president. Afghanistan, after a very long time, was a peaceful nation, which was flourishing with rising tourism and became an important destination for hippies during the hippie trail. In 1970s, Cold War was at its peak and the world was divided by Iron Curtain. So either you had to be in support of the USSR or the US. But there was another faction of non-allied powers, which was an initiative taken by the first Indian Prime Minister, Johar Lal Nehru, where countries became part of the hemisphere, which was neither with the USSR or with the US, and abstained itself from being part of the Cold War. Afghanistan chose to be the non-allied and established good relations with India and the United States. But Soviet President Brezhnev was really not happy with this and asked Daud Khan to get rid of any Western advisors or representatives. To which Daud Khan replied and said, the people of Afghanistan are masters of their own house and no foreign country could tell them how to run their own affairs. PDPA, which supported Daud Khan during the coup, was now divided in two parts, KHALQ and Parcham. Soviets tried to keep them together and started funding PDPA. On the other hand, Daud established his own party in 1977, National Revolutionary Party, whose primary objective was to balance the Islamic extremist and socialism. To avoid any threat to their objectives, Daud started executing PDPA members. And in 1978, Afghanistan witnessed another coup, Saar Revolution, which ended with execution of Daud Khan and his family. Now Afghanistan became Democratic Republic of Afghanistan and Noor Mohammad Taraki became their new president. He also tried to bring new reforms like abolition of dowry system, new land reforms and transferring the power from mullahs to civilian courts. Girls now had access and right to education. Noor Muhammad famously said that visit us in a year and you will find mosque empty. Due to his strong actions against the Islam, extremists started a civil war against PDPA. And in 1979, Noor Muhammad Taraki was executed. This became the reason for Soviets to invade Afghanistan to protect their communist ideology. If you would like the part two for this video and about the history of Afghanistan post-1980, then I'll make another video if we reach 100 likes in another one week. And if you want more content on history, do not forget to subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot for joining in.